was cracking big dogs welcome back to the channel this is going to be the last mock draft before all of my redrafts take place now i've already had two of my redrafts i participate in the fantasy jocks annual um 14 team league which we already picked that was a super flex and we had the new york city subscribers only live draft last weekend for those y'all that followed along through the live stream what's up that was tons of fun i uh, had a blast i hope a lot of y'all come come next year because i'm gonna scale it out and open multiple weekends for you guys that vlog is going to um drop later today so if you're watching saturday morning i have that scheduled to either come out later this afternoon or tomorrow but today uh, i'm gonna be practicing for my e-town get down draft and i know a lot of you guys love that draft uh, you love the vlog that comes out and that's on monday so that vlog will be out a couple of days afterwards this is my big money league that I play at home with my high school friends. For the most part, this is our 10th year, our 10th anniversary. So this is a big one. I'm looking to bring the chip back to the HQ. Something I haven't done in, I think, four, four, maybe even longer, four or five years now. It's been a minute. It's going to be our 10th, our 10th year. Um, so I want to practice for that. I know I have the second pick. What we did for our draft order this year was based on last year's standings. Everyone got to pick a golfer that was playing in the PGA tournament that was last weekend. So it was the Northern Trust. Everyone picked a golfer, and depending on where your golfer finished, you got to pick your spot. So I ended up with the two spot. And both of the redrafts I've done so far, I've had the two spot. So this is not new to me. Both of those drafts have been super flex drafts, which means you start one quarterback, and there is a flex spot open, which is available for you to start a quarterback. Anytime you have that, you should be starting two quarterbacks. Just a little heads up for you guys that have not played super flex or Basically, it's a two-quarterback league. That's the same thing with the E-Town Get Down. It's a new rule we implemented this year. So I will be practicing from the second spot. Super flex. I am keeping Andrew Luck for a 15th round pick. So uh, keep that in mind when I'm drafting. And you can... They used to be able to put keepers in into here. This is the Fantasy Pros Draft Wizard. And you're basically... You're, you're drafting against the computer, but you could put on uh, all these different settings to draft against you know whatever site you're using or whatever. And they used to let you put in keepers, but I guess you have to upgrade to a premium subscription in order to do that now. But we ain't really about to do that. We'll just pretend. And uh, actually, I'll pull up. Let me pull up the keepers that are going to be kept in the E-Town Get Down League so far. Because I have that saved in an Excel file. This thing ever loads. Hey. Where is you? Okay, so we have, this is the list of keepers right here. We have Andrew Luck, that's me being kept in the 15th, Julian Edelman in the 16th, Zach Ertz for a 10th, Wentz for a 13th, Jimmy G for a 16th, Davis for a 9th, and Mar Marcus Mariota for a 9th. Um, and again, guys, if you've never done a Superflex Leagues, uh, quarterbacks are much more valuable because you have to start two of them, which means a lot of them are off the waiver wire, and it's not easy to find them. So imagine, it's kind of the same thing as a running back, right? You can only find 32 starting running backs in the NFL, but it's even more specific now with quarterbacks, considering there's no such thing as like a a, uh, a second string quarterback that you can use in your redraft leagues. You know what I mean? So in a running back, like in a backfield, you might be able to start, you know, like Rex Burkhead and James White in a league. But for quarterbacks, obviously, you don't have that. So they're even more difficult to predict. All right. So we have Todd Gurley go off the board first. And again, I'm drafting from the second spot. Now, this is interesting for me because my rankings have Le'Veon Bell as number one. David Johnson, two, Zeke, three, Todd Gurley, four. In the first draft I did, I picked Le'Veon Bell with the second pick. In the second draft I did, I did David Johnson because I wanted to diversify the guys that I had. Because, guys, if you're in multiple redraft leagues, I always say this. You should be trying to diversify the guys that you pick on your team. Because if you only go after, like, your guys and you only pick, especially for me in this situation where I'm getting the second spot overall in all of my leagues, not a bad problem to have. But... Um, you don't want to end up going, I don't want to end up going Le'Veon Bell with every one of my teams. And if something were to happen, like there goes my season down the drain. So I've been diversifying. I am definitely thinking about taking Le'Veon Bell again with the two. I might, if Bell goes off the board first, I might go with Todd Gurley here. Um, so I would have Gurley one league, David Johnson, another league, Le'Veon Bell in the third league. I'm not really worried about Bell. I know a lot of people are worried about his contract situation, but I am not worried whatsoever considering um, he came into you know, camp late last year, or he, he actually signed, I think, today to Friday, well, it would be yesterday for you guys watching it now. He signed Friday with the team, 
um, last year. So he would have been back at practice today if, if that was the case. But apparently, you know, they're saying he's not, he might not be back on Labor Day. I don't know. I'm not concerned. There's no way he's going to be sitting out in the prime of his career right now. I think he just wants to be out on the field too badly. Thing is, like, even I'm not really one to get excited about drafting handcuffs, but I think it's pretty safe to say that if Le'Veon Bell were out, James Conner is going to handle 18 plus touches a game. So if you want to go with Le'Veon Bell or if you think he's risky, which I really don't, considering just the amount of upside he gives you, uh, draft draft James Conner later. But I'll go with Bell here if Gurley does go off the board number one. I'm not sure who's drafting one in my league. I think it's uh, actually my friend Michael Bell. So I might go Gurley just to diversify it. And Gurley, you know, he is my number four running back right now. And I went into this in my running backs tier, uh, my running back tier video. If you guys haven't watched that, I, I check that out. I go through my top 25 running backs broken down by tier. Gurley is... Well, I don't love him just because the regression is going to come, obviously, because he had 19 touchdowns and a million yards. He's still a very safe play. He's still a featured workhorse in a very, very good offense with a very, very good coach and a good offensive line. So, like, as much as uh, you want to bash me having Gurley at four, like, I would be 100% fine having him as my RB1. So, I'm going to go with Bell here just to kind of get this thing moving. Let's see what we got going off the board. See, this is pretty typical in super flex leagues. We've seen, oh, wow, even four quarterbacks. So Rodgers, Russell Wilson, Deshaun Watson, Tom Brady off the board right now. Now, what's interesting about these leagues is um, a lot of the skill players fall to you, which is kind of cool. But actually, not that many skill players fell to me here. However, I do have my eye on one of them that I really like. Um, so in the other two leagues I've had so far, it went Le'Veon Bell. And then one of them was a 14-team league. So I think I had to reach a little bit, and I went with... It was either Diggs and, and Tom Brady or Tom Brady Diggs because that was like the second and then the maybe like the 20, I don't know. The 14-team league, obviously less players were available, but this last one I did, the New York City Subscriber League, I was the two pick and then Keenan Allen fell to me in the second round and then I took Tom Brady on the other way around. The reason I did Tom Brady, and you guys might be thinking, you know, that's pretty early for a quarterback or for Brady when you could wait on like a Stafford or something. Uh, the settings were six point per passing touchdown as well as minus three points for interception. So keep in mind, guys, when you are picking, and this goes for any league, right? If you are deciding on your quarterback, you have to know your settings. If it's normal, like four-point passing touchdown, minus two point for interception, that's even big because sometimes Yahoo does minus one point for interception. Sometimes it does minus two points. Make sure you know your settings, guys, because if uh, I'm getting a guy like Brady, right? I think he is super valuable in a league like that where it's six point for passing touchdown, minus three point for interception because Brady is almost always at the top of the league in terms of passing touchdowns. So, of course, that's going to be a good thing uh, when you're getting six points. But he's also very accurate and doesn't throw a lot of interceptions, right? The way their offense flows is he does take a lot of deep shots, but he's accurate with them, connects on a lot of them. But the rest of the time, he's delivering dump-offs to his running backs or to Julian Edelman or something like that. So he doesn't put himself into a risk situation where guys like Deshaun Watson, I would never pick in a minus three-point interception league early. I think he dropped all the way down to the fourth or fifth in that league, fourth or fifth round, because Deshaun Watson, while you might think he's explosive and makes a lot of plays, and I'm sure he will, and he'll connect with Hopkins on a lot of Hail Marys, he's going to throw a lot of interceptions this year. And for every interception you throw, that's cutting your touchdown numbers in half, right? If you're getting minus three points. And that's the same thing with the 4-2 ratio. So just be aware of that when you are uh, drafting your quarterback. So right now, uh, I love Christian McCaffrey all the way down here at the 2-9. I highly doubt he falls to me here in my regular league, but I would gladly pick him. He has looked like uh, first round workhorse every bit of the preseason thus far and uh, this was something I got wrong early in the summer I'm not afraid to admit that I, I thought CJ Anderson was going to eat into the work a little more Christian McCaffrey has handled like 85 percent of the touches 85 or more percent of the touches and the first team snaps he's getting in between the tackles work he's busting long plays he's catching balls and the most important thing is he's getting that goal line work and that's it was almost like a poor man's version of of Kareem Hunt and Dalvin Cook where we're nervous about Spencer Ware and Latavius Murray here we're worried about CJ Anderson and I was even more worried because that is such a high volume position the Panthers goal line back has had so many opportunities right it's Jonathan Stewart and Cam Newton they get so many rushes each of them uh, inside the five yard line and if McCaffrey's not getting those that's a big hit but we're seeing him get those in preseason so if they're going to run him into the ground like he did at Stanford and he's seen obviously that he could hold up with that type of workload I would be happy to have Christian McCaffrey all the way down here. So I'll go with McCaffrey, and I'll have two running backs. And again, in my draft, I won't be going nuts about a uh, about a quarterback right away because I do have um, Andrew Luck in the 15th round. And obviously, I'm a little nervous about him, but I can grab another quarterback and have them as QB1, and Luck gives me the upside of, well, 
you know, Andrew Luck of 2014 as my quarterback too. So I'm not going crazy there. Um, the, lead, the, the, the statistics or the, the point scoring setting is four point for passing touchdown and minus two point for interceptions. So it's a little less valuable than like the six point passing touchdown. So I'm not going nuts about quarterback selection. Um, it's also a 10 team league. So it's not like um, all of them go off the board quickly. Whereas if you're in a deeper league, right, like the fantasy jocks league I'm in, it's a 14 team league. So if you, if me picking at the two spot, right, if I pass on a quarterback here, there's a good chance because there's 27 picks in between my next pick that there's a monster quarterback run and I'm going to miss out on some of the better quarterbacks. So I would probably shy away from quarterbacks in this instance because I see a lot of good value on the board still. I love Devonta Adams. Uh, I love Stephon Diggs. Y'all know that. Hilton is also nice. Cook all the way down here. I, I like Dalvin Cook as well. I like Devonta Freeman. Um, I I'm gaining a lot of steam on Jordan Howard. I just like what they're saying in camp. I like what Matt Nagy's saying. He's just saying that Jordan Howard, he's repeating it over and over and over again, that Jordan Howard is going to play on third downs. Now, whether or not that means he's going to get more targets, we'll see. But the more snaps, the better for Jordan Howard, as far as I'm concerned. Um, and I don't think you can ever have enough running backs, to be honest with you. So I'm actually going to stick by my rankings and go with Devonta Freeman here. I think he is a super high floor player here in this Falcons offense. I know Tevin Coleman's look good and Tevin Coleman is going to do good, but that has not stopped Devonta Freeman from averaging like 90 to hundred total yards a game. Plus uh, he has pretty much, I would say 75% chance of scoring a touchdown every time he's there. So I'm going to go with Devonta Freeman there and you see another huge run of quarterbacks go off the board. So luck, Kirk Cousins, Carson Wentz, Drew Brees. And I also have to remember, like, when I'm practicing these mock drafts, that some of these quarterbacks are already off the board and they're being kept later. So I won't get as generous of an opportunity here. Um, ooh, and we're seeing my man Stefan Diggs. So if this happens, I'm going Stefan Diggs here, and then I'll grab another quarterback in the next round because uh, I have it's only two picks before my next pick, and I don't think Stefan Diggs will fall to me if I don't go with him here. Y'all know I love I love Stephon Diggs. I think him and him and Kirk are going to connect on a, a on a nuclear level this year. And I know Adam Thielen got hurt in practice uh, last week. It was I don't think or was it in the game? I'm not really sure. He came out. Uh, I don't think anything serious came of it. I don't I don't remember if we heard any updates on it. Um, we'll see. Left Tuesday's practice with a left leg injury. I don't think. Yeah, I don't think anything serious came from it, but. If it did, obviously, that's just going to be more targets into Stefan Diggs, but it's definitely not going to be. What are we doing here? Suffering injury in practice. This is one day ago. Tell me, tell me some kind of update here. Do me good. Do me like you should, baby. We'll go back to that. All right, so I'm going to go Diggs here. He will be my wide receiver one completely. I absolutely love that after getting Bell, McCaffrey, Devonta Freeman. That is a killer start. Um, damn, I almost don't want to pass on some of the running backs and wide receivers. Like, I almost might take, you know, I'm going to try it out because I already have Andrew Luck, so I'm going to try, you know, this is, this is the good part about mock drafts, man. You try them as many times as you want and experiment with different things. So just because it doesn't happen in one, you know, mess around and go back to the previous page that I was showing where you can do the settings and then maybe uncheck some of the boxes where the rankings are different and you'll get a different feel for the draft. So I go Diggs here. Like, I wouldn't even hate Adam Thielen. This is a half PPR league I play in, so Fitz is another good pick. Um, I have to, I love Lamar Miller, man. People are I'm, – I'm, I'm pretty pissed because in the New York City Subscriber League, uh, it was my turn, and I was deciding on a running back. And I was actually talking to you guys, and everyone was telling me, Royce Freeman, Royce Freeman, Royce Freeman. I was like, you know what? I'm going to listen to y'all, Royce Freeman. The next pick was Lamar Miller. I didn't realize Lamar Miller was still on the goddamn board. I would have went with Lamar Miller because I offered Austin, who took Lamar Miller, straight up. The trade is still pending right now. I was like, bro, I'll give you Royce Freeman straight up for Lamar Miller. I just, I'm more confident in uh, Lamar Miller's volume. From a week-to-week -week basis, I'm more confident in Miller's volume. I'm more confident in him being involved in the passing game. I am more confident that the Houston offense will be better, if not just as good as the Denver offense. So I think a lot of people are getting really hyped about Freeman. Uh, you need to realize that Booker is going to continue to have a role. I know that they said Booker was a starter, and that's just all oh, whatever. It's just coach speak. Uh, and it is. It is. Freeman is clearly the better runner here. But, guys, you got to understand that Booker is going to have a passing down role. He was in for the two-minute drill in their last preseason game, the third preseason game. And, uh, and you know, we'll have to see what this offense does. Their line's not great. So it's, it's a kind of a similar situation to Miller, but I'm just more confident that Miller is going to have 
a heavier workload because he has no competition behind him. So I'm actually going to pass on another quarterback here because I know I have um, Andrew Luck here. Should I go with... I'm going to go with Lamar Miller because I think in terms of a value play, there will be many more valuable wide receivers down here than there will be running backs when it gets to my pick this next time around. If that makes sense. So always try to read ahead. Don't just don't just always look at the board and don't just always look at your pick in a vacuum. Try to read ahead. Try to read your draft and, and see what's going on. So only three quarterbacks went off the board. There's still Big Ben there. I love that. Both of the super flex leagues I have I've drafted for so far, my quarterbacks are Tom Brady as my QB1 and Ben Roethlisberger as my QB2. Just so happened that that's how it worked out. But um, let's see who's left on the board. Yeah, so still a lot of good players here. Royce Freeman is still on the board. I know a lot of you guys will probably go nuts. I already have four running backs. So with Chris Hogan, y'all know I love Chris Hogan. I don't. I still don't understand. There are some people that are still arguing against Chris Hogan. And like this is where he's, I feel like, still going in drafts. Like he's still going at the end of the sixth round. And it's crazy to me because he's been like my number 45 ranked player, I feel like, since like June, for real. If you go back to any of my videos, it's been, it's really just been Chris Hogan. So Chris Hogan will be my guy here. See what happens. Ah, Big Ben just went off the board. Probably should have grabbed a Big Ben there. So Jimmy G is also off the board already, so I'm going to pretend that I can't take him. I would be completely happy with Matt Ryan here. So I'll go with Matt Ryan. And now my lineup, which I think is incredible right now, would be Le'Veon Bell, C-Mac, Stephon Diggs, Chris Hogan, Devonta Freeman, Lamar Miller, and then I have Andrew Luck and Matt Ryan. Like, that's a goddamn squad, people. That is a squad. Um... And, oh, wow, Corey Davis is still left. Sammy Watkins now. Oh, I love Jamal Williams. So I actually just tweeted something out the, <laughs> yesterday. Uh, it was kind of funny. Gotten like 70 retweets, which is out of control. Did we hear this thing still in fucking load? So I'm uploading a, or I'm downloading a video right now from iMovie. That's why my computer is going super slow. Downloading the video, uh, my behind the scenes fantasy football industry interview video with CD Carter. Um, if you guys are not familiar with who he is, he is the founder and the owner of Draft Day Consultants, which is a pretty dope company. They help you basically, you know, just, they're just consultants for your draft. So I tweeted this out yesterday. If any of y'all missed it, in, in spite of, not in spite of, but in, in regards to Jamal Williams. So this is what I said right here. Jamal Williams don't finish the season as a top 15 running back. I'll buy someone's grandma 20 packs of these candies. And I know... Y'all chilled at your grandma. Oh, first of all, rip if uh, any of y'all's grandmas passed away. I have one of mine on one of my sides that has. Uh, sorry, I don't mean to get deep. I don't even know why I went down that path. We're gonna we're gonna talk about strawberry candies. I know these are like literally anytime I go to my grandma's house, these are plentiful. Like she ain't gonna let me leave unless I eat about seventy of these. So I said I'll buy someone's grandma twenty packs of these. Um, if Jamal Williams is not a top fifteen running back, but you have to retweet it. So if any of y'all follow me on Twitter and want a chance to be in here, you got to retweet. This is nuts that there's 76 retweets on this. Um, but yeah, basically I'm telling you that I absolutely love Jamal Williams here. I think there's going to be one back that emerges in this backfield. And just give me the guy who's got the first shot. Jamal Williams was the workhorse. So you have the track record of them depending on Jamal Williams, right? We're not just assuming that he can handle the load or assuming that they're uh, that they might give him the load. We've literally seen a big enough sample size down the whole second half of last year where they were completely comfortable giving Jamal Williams that role. Who else we got here? So in a two-quarterback league, I'm also absolutely grabbing three um, three starting quarterbacks. But I'll get to that at the, at the tail end of the draft. Uh, I'll grab another quarterback in the 15th round, I think it was, when I'm keeping Andrew Luck so we can kind of stay with that pace. Um, and there's definitely some interesting names on the board. So Tevin Coleman wouldn't be a guy I hate. He's a guy I like to draft, and he's not really even a handcuff, obviously, because he's got a lot of standalone value. But if you're one of those guys that's concerned about Devonta Freeman, his health injury, his health risk, um, then this would be a good pick for you here. Because normally, like, if you're drafting Devonta Freeman, you don't want to waste two, like, top six round or seven round picks on Tevin Coleman. But he's going to fall all the way to, like, basically the end of the eighth or the ninth round. I think Coleman's a good pick just by himself. Um, so in this instance, I might actually do that because my only concern with Freeman, he's going to get the work, but he has that scary concussion history and he's a guy who plays so tough, like the way he runs, he's, he's a smaller guy. The way he runs is like putting his head down and charging into people. He's, he's elusive too, right? He's really good at like one cuts and his vision and ability and shit like that, but he does run very tough. He runs bigger than his size and that can lead to concussions. Um, so if he gets another concussion, he could be out for a while, which is why I would think about 
Tevin Coleman. So Tevin Coleman's more of like a floor play for me, a safety play. Jamal Williams would be more of an upside play. And to be honest with you, I'm not sure I need much more upside at the running back position. Um, I would like Corey Davis here as an upside play as well. But I'm going to go with Tevin Coleman, and I don't own him in any redraft leagues. I don't think I owned him in any of my redraft leagues last year because he's kind of a boring player that doesn't have upside unless Freeman gets hurt. But all the way down at the bottom of the eighth round, I'm cool with grabbing Coleman here because if one of the other running backs gets hurt, you know, you can have a worse offense to split running backs in. So I had Crabtree, Michelle went off the board and still got wide receivers left for me. Cool. So I went with them. I could still get Jamal Williams, but I am racking up a lot of, uh, a lot of running backs here. But again, I don't think you can ever have too many running backs. However, I am going to go with Corey Davis. I think I have Corey Davis. Um, I think I moved Corey Davis up ahead of Sammy Watkins after this preseason. While obviously you all know I was very high on Sammy Watkins coming in, there's nothing I can deny about the connection that Hill and Mahomes have. I think it's I think it's time to just realize that Tariq Hill just might low-key be the GOAT. He might just be so damn good that you can't ignore him. Regardless of his efficiency, regardless of the other weapons, like Tariq Hill just might be that dude. So that's obviously going to hurt Watkins if he doesn't take over a serious role. Now, nothing of his usage this preseason has scared me whatsoever. He has played... Uh, he's actually played more snaps than Tyreek Hill has with the starters. He's being used at the X receiver. He's being used in the slot, which I love, which was one of my points about being high on him coming into the season was I loved that Watkins was going to be moved around a lot and um, he was going to be able to catch passes all over the field, which was something that they just used him as a decoy pretty much in LA. And that's why his receiving numbers weren't really that high. But Watkins is now being moved around a lot. So I still see Watkins having monster games. But the fact that we've seen Tariq Hill connect with Mahomes on a whole nother level this preseason, obviously, you know, I gotta be, I've got to be completely objective here, and I can't just keep feeding you things that I don't actually see with my own eyes anymore. So for that reason, I'll go with Corey Davis and, and his upside of being the number one uh, receiver in this Tennessee offense, which should hopefully be new and improved. Jamal Williams actually almost fell to me here. Let's see who we got on the board here. Um, okay, so starting quarterbacks are pretty much going off the board pretty quickly now. Um, I would have Matt Ryan. I would have Andrew Luck. Uh, now is when I would probably look to get a third one just because they look like they're coming off the board um, pretty quickly. So there was none picked here, which tells me that there's probably going to be a run of them after this. And, oh, damn, I, do, I don't really love any of these guys. Thank God they won't be my QB2. But the reason you want to get a third quarterback if you're starting two quarterbacks is, one, obviously both quarterbacks are going to go through a bye week, and you never want to have uh, a week where you're not starting a quarterback in that super flex spot. Because think about it, guys. The floor for a fantasy quarterback is pretty much like 13 or 14 points. Like, that's the absolute floor, right? Barring, like a, barring you having to start, like, I don't know, like uh, Josh Allen or something, right? The floor is going to be like 13 or 14 points. Uh, you would be lucky, right? Because whoever is going to be in the super flex is obviously not going to be your, any of your two starting running backs, not going to be your two starting wide receivers, not going to be your two starting flex. So that takes away your six best offensive players. Whoever your seventh best offensive player is, his floor is nowhere near 13 or 14 fantasy points. So like the worst super flex quarterback you can have in is going to have an incredibly higher floor and ceiling than whatever skill player you have. So you never want to have a week where you put yourself in the position where you don't have a starting quarterback to put in that super flex spot, which leads you to the point that you want to have three on your team because there will be buys. There will be quarterbacks that get hurt, whether they're going to be on your team or not. I don't know, but that's a possibility. You'll have quarterbacks get hurt. You'll also have quarterbacks that just play shitty. Like if, if Matt Ryan was a guy you picked as like QB6 last year, like he was getting drafted very high and then he was throwing one touchdown pass a game, you're going to wish that you had a backup quarterback that might have like broke out. So uh, I like Trubisky. I don't love him. I actually like Case Keenum here a lot. He's probably my favorite one. Tyrod Taylor, dude, like, I actually really like him, especially in this setting where it's only four point per passing touchdown and the running quarterbacks have a little bit of an upside. Uh, Tyrod Taylor really intrigues me here. I'm just scared he's not going to hold that job for so long. Good news is, though, I doubt anyone in a 10-team league is going to draft Baker Mayfield uh, in a super flex league because... I don't know. It, it just seems kind of stupid. If it was Dynasty, obviously, it'd be a very high pick. But the fact that it's only 10 teams, um, he'll probably be available. So I'm actually going to wait on quarterback till my wraparound pick. See what other running backs we have available. Um, oh, tight ends are still Blaney Walker, my boy. There's still a lot of tight ends left. Uh, I'm actually going to go Peyton Barber here. I didn't realize he was still on the, on the board. Um, Peyton Barber is a guy, obviously, if you've watched my video over the last few days, it's no competition here. I guess that's not really baked into the rankings or the ADP yet, but... If he's available in, in like your eighth round or seventh round even, go for him. 
Ronald Jones has looked absolutely dreadful. While on the other hand, it's not even like it's not even like Barber has looked like okay and jo Jones has looked terrible. Like Jones has looked terrible and Barber's looked very good. And he's getting a ton of usage. He's really taking all the snaps with the first team. Charles Sims is now in the IR. So Barber is an easy pick for me here, even though I have about 17 running backs on the roster. So two more wide receivers go off the board. And y'all know I love my boy Delaney Walker, although he is messing around with his toe injury. And that kind of scares me. I know he's a tough dude and he plays through that stuff. But like that, I don't want that to be an injury that lingers all year. He is very confident he'll be ready for week one. I feel like toe injuries are ones that linger all year. That kind of scares me, but I would still take Delaney Walker. He's my top ranked guy, but I would love to have any of Delaney Walker, Evan Ingram, Trey Burton. I even like Jack Doyle. David Njoku is finally playing a full slate of snaps. So I actually might wait on tight end here. And uh, this is probably when I would go with the, the other quarterback. So for shit sakes, I actually like Andy Dalton. I think they're going to be throwing a lot this, uh, this year because they're probably going to be losing a lot. Um, and I kind of like the group of weapons he has there. So... Andy Dalton's a good guy here. I also like... Give me a second. Like I said, I like Andy Dalton. I like Tyrod. I mean, I like Trubisky's upside as well in the new offense, but there's nothing that I've seen really this preseason that shows me he's going to be a good passer. But he does have that rushing floor as well. Um, you know what? I'll go with Trubisky because he's a guy that I could probably let sit on the bench. And if he you know, gets better and better as the year goes on, then I could use him. But I have Matt Ryan and Andrew Luck cemented in as my two quarterbacks. And then I could always drop Trubisky if he's not doing that well, you know? Should not, should not, it's safe. Okay. All right. So I waited on tight end. There goes Jimmy Graham. There goes Kyle Rudolph. So I'll have to snag a tight end with one of these two picks I have. There are not a lot of backs left on the board. There are some decent wide receivers. Um, now, I just made my wide receiver video talking about my top five sleepers. Guys getting picked past 100. And we have Kenny Galladay on the list, Keelan Cole on the list, Chris Godwin on the list, Anthony Miller. They're all basically right here. I forget who the fifth one was. Oh, Nelson Aguilar. He just he went in, in the middle of that pick. So uh, a lot of good wide receivers available here. And this is probably when I would start picking high upside wide receivers because I have one, two, three, four, five. I have six running backs already. So this is when I would start picking these guys with high upside. Um, I'm going to go with Cole. Uh, he definitely does not have the same upside, I don't think, as Kenny Galladay. The reason I go with Cole is because I only have two wide receivers. Oh, I have three, I guess. But if I were to need someone for instant production, I think more would come from Cole, at least in the beginning portion of the year, because he, he's already cemented in as the wide receiver one. I'm getting a lot of questions of Keelan Cole versus Mike Williams of the Chargers. Guys, you under, have to understand that Mike Williams is still the wide receiver three right now. He is still behind Keenan Allen, obviously, and he's behind Tyrell Williams. He is not getting more snaps than Tyrell Williams. He is not running with the first team more than Tyrell Williams is. So until he passes that, you're looking at hypothetical upside. You're not looking at realistic playing time. When Keelan Cole is the actual one. So if he's going to give you more production, I think it's going to be Keelan Cole. So I'll go Cole here with my 12th round pick. I'm probably unreasonably high on Cole. Um, okay, so Evan Ingram just went off the board, which means there are not a lot of tight ends left. So there's Delaney Walker, Trey Burton. I've moved Trey Burton really far up my rankings, and I think he's actually one spot behind Delaney Walker. Um, so I'm going to go with Walker here because he's my highest-ranked tight end. And that fills out my starting lineup for the most part. And now um, I usually like to get these high upside guys, and I really think I've pegged a lot of the uh, – damn, Jordan Wilkins was the last guy that I liked uh, in the running back position. So I'll probably leave the running backs alone considering I have six of them already. Um, now is when I would just go high upside guys. And, oof, I like all of them. I like them all. I have to start one defense. Thank God. We nixed kickers in every one of my leagues. Thank the Lord. Um, I'm going to go with... Who do I have already on my squad? Diggs, Hogan, Corey Davis, Keelan Cole. So I've split Godwin and Galladay. They're two guys that I want to get in all of my leagues, but I've split both of them. Um, one league, I was the side... I, at each time, I get to about... It's usually about the 13th or 14th round. I have to choose between the two because one of them won't get back to me. Um... So I've had to split both of them, and I've gone with Godwin because I think he has a more likely chance of taking over the starting role over d Jacks than Kenny Galladay has of doing so over Marvin Jones or Golden Tate. Um, although I do love Anthony Miller, and I'm actually going to go with Miller here because I don't know if I own any shares of him. He's just being picked very early in the leagues that I've been in. Um, so we'll go with Miller, and then obviously I'll have another pick of my guy. Actually, this is the 15th round, so I said I would take another quarterback to kind of nix out the fact that I had... Um, Andrew Luck, so I'll go Case Keenum here to make it more realistic. 
Oh, AP. Forgot he was on the board, too. Sometimes with these rankings, obviously, they have all the rankings that were of the months prior, like leading up, kind of baked into it. I think it's actually my last pick because I have to pick a defense. We did 16 rounds. Um, so I've talked about this, guys. I am a streamer. I'm someone who streams their defenses. Uh, the first the first week of the season, uh, Baltimore is a great pick, although they'll probably go kind of early. Baltimore plays the Bills at home. Uh, so that's a great matchup. And the Saints get Tampa Bay at home against, obviously, the Janus winston list Bucks. Um, and the third team that, I, that I've actually identified that you guys might be like, eh, but it's the Packers. Now, the three things I look for in a defense when I'm streaming them, because I stream week to week, is the home team. Are they favorites in the game? And is it a low over under total? The most important thing is to make sure that they're favorites, first of all. Um, and the other two are kind of equally important, important in my eyes. Um, so I like home teams that are favored to win in low scoring matchups, right? It's common sense, but you can actually look at these things, these things via Vegas. So I'd go on Five Dimes, and I, you know, Five Dimes EU. That's the gambling site I use. But you know, just go on Google and type in like Vegas odds for Week One. You'll be able to find the Packers play against the Bears. Um, Packers defenses look pretty good this preseason in some games, some instances, a couple pick sixes, um, but they're like eight and a half point favorites and they're at home. So those are things I look for. Those are things that can help you identify streaming defenses. While you might not think the Packers are that good of a team or that good of a defense. And you're like, Oh, the bears have some sneaky upside at the same time. Vegas has them winning by like eight and a half points and they're at home. So they are my sneaky pick. If you don't get the saints or the Ravens, it would be that order Ravens, saints, and then Packers are my team, but the saints are available here. So we're going to go with them. And I think that concludes the draft pretty much. Um, B plus, thank you. And guys, for anyone that actually looks at the grades, please like don't send me your grades and be like, why did I get this? These grades literally have no no effect on what how your team is going to do. So looking at my team, uh, I think this is an absolutely stacked squad, and I feel like there's no chance that I'm going to get a team like this in my actual draft. But it was fun while it lasted, and I got to look pretty cool in front of y'all. But um, Matt Ryan as a quarterback. And like I said, I have Andrew Luck as a keeper. I picked Case Keenum as my third QB. I, I think Case Keenum is one of the best picks as uh, as a second quarterback in a two-quarterback league. Just really good weapons. I think that offense is going to be improved with Keenum. Um, and I got Bell, C-Mac, and Devonta Freeman as my wide receivers. Still able to get Stephon Diggs and Chris Hogan. Delaney Walker as my tight end. Lamar Miller as my second flex. And uh, I think that's that's the squad right there, man. I have Corey Davis, Peyton Barber, Keelan Cole, Anthony Miller on my bench all Really solid bench players, to be honest. No, like, wasted picks, no handcuffs or anything like that. All guys that I think it can put right into the lineup and actually produce for me in week one. So really happy about this uh, this team, how it worked out. And this is the last mock draft I'm probably going to do until my E-Town Get Down draft, which, again, will be published probably on, like, Wednesday or Thursday of next week. I know you all love that vlog. It's one of my more popular videos every week. Um, but if you guys enjoyed this video, you got some value from it, I would appreciate a thumbs up down below because you all know I put a lot of work into these videos. Um, stay tuned for the, the vlog of the New York City live draft, you know, subscribers only draft weekend that's dropping later today. So uh, make sure you hit that notification button and I will try to live stream on Sunday. I'm not sure what my plans are for the weekend. You know, it's Labor Day weekend. So your man's is going to be probably knee deep into marks. So I'm not really sure what my agenda is going to be on Sunday. Uh, but yeah, uh, like, the, like the video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to the channel if you are new. We'll be coming out with videos all season long. So I'm not sure what my in-season content schedule is going to be like, um, but we'll have that. So subscribe if you're new. If you're listening via podcast, make sure you hit that rating and review button. And uh, and that's all. And I'll see y'all um, probably tomorrow. If not, I'll have something for you guys on Monday. I'm just trying to put out as much content as I possibly can before the season starts. Much love to all y'all. Peace.